Hey guys, I want to do a video today about something I heard the other day about sometimes you have to lose everything to gain everything. And, and it's kind of like a, a true a true saying, I would say. You know, I just want to talk about this because it has to do a lot with expats and just people in general. It's a, it, it, everybody can learn something kind of from this story and, and from that saying. And it, I just want to tell this little story about something I went through and actually a couple of stories and they're kind of interesting about you know how when when you reach reach the top or you reach the bottom you know that 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 comes into play somewhat you know um i remember one time i was i was married and i had built this business it was an ebay business and it was not just on ebay but it was outside of ebay too <laughs> it was buying selling uh, baseball cards, coins, and I had grown a coin collection that was like the probably one of the best, one of the top, I won't say it was the top 10 in the United States, but it was pretty close up there, you know, like, I mean, when you say top 10, you're talking about a guy with a few coins of, of, of real rarity. I had, like most of the American coins, and it was like a dream that I had had to do, you know, and, and then later on, it, it, it became a business for me, and you know, on eBay, selling and buying you know, rare coins, baseball cards, all graded stuff mostly, <clears throat> and do, and doing other stuff too, you know. But I remember I had finally reached the, like the pinnacle, you know, like I had reached a spot, not the pinnacle, but pretty close to it. I was making about a quarter of a million dollars a year, okay, um, and I was doing really, really well at it, you know. And I remember talking to my to my wife at the time and asking her. You know, and and we, I won't say we had an excellent marriage, but we had a fairly decent marriage at the time. You know, it was okay. It was kind of like going along. Um, she was kind of a person that was very private and didn't didn't want to be really close. But I had asked her for some help one time, and I, and, and I just asked her, I says, you know, in the afternoon, you have some time in the afternoon. Can you go mail this stuff? <clears throat> I'll get it all packaged and ready to go, you know, to to help me so I can you know, go to my other job in the afternoon because I worked two jobs. My second job allowed me to do packaging and stuff like that because it was just a security job at the time that I had. And what I did was, I remember asking her about that and she, and she, she goes, no, she goes, no, I don't have time. And I only had like a half an hour every every afternoon to, to like get ready at 45 minutes. And, and I really didn't have the time to be running over to the post office before I went to work, even though my work was fairly close by. And when she said no, it kind of like really hit me in the head, like, wow, what am I supposed to do, hire somebody? You know, I'm making a lot of money, but if I hire somebody, you know, I, I, this is these are valuable coins, they could steal them, walk off of them. It was stuff that I really didn't trust anybody else but her. And when she said no, it kind of blew me away as to where our marriage really was, and, and, and it later on, it blew me away even more with what she did, but I mean, it's a different story. <clears throat> um, what happened was I just gave up on the business. I started shutting it down. I, I, I just figured, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll end it. And I did. And later on, our marriage ended for different reasons. The, the marriage ended for different reasons. And I went through some other stuff and, you know, and what happened was Later on, I had to sell my house, and I, I was, because I didn't have that other income, but I had my my two jobs, and I had a lot of debt and stuff like that. I was trying to pay off because of of the the marriage and stuff, and I was trying to like figure out what to do, you know, like how to get get past all these issues, so I could still retire at fifty five because that was my my goal. And I was about fifty years old then when all, a lot of stuff started happening, <coughs> some you know as far as the divorce, and what happened was. Eventually, when I sold the house, I had to move out to this other house, and I, I remember throwing away all my stuff, and and just throwing away memories and things, and and, and like I was like, wow, where do you go from here? Like, w w you know, I'm moving into a real dump over in the really bad section of town, so I can afford it. Um, you know, what's life gonna be like for me over there? You know, it's not. I'm not gonna be used to it. It's not. You know, it's not a place I want to be. It, it was close to my my other job but I mean it was actually like right right down the street from my job I was like wow but this this is really gonna stink 
you know, like this is gonna be not not good. And I was, I remember the day I moved, I was actually shaking and my friends were looking at me, Steve, you're gonna be all right, you're gonna be all right, you know, like, you okay? And I wasn't okay, I, I, I really wasn't okay. I was very shaken that day because I remember I didn't have like a lot of cash around. I, I, I didn't want to cash out retirement funds to get money or anything like that. And I was really needing for some money and things were really awful at that time, you know? Um, you know, between moving and, and just finances and stuff like that. And then I moved to another house, which was right around the corner, which was really good. And it was actually in a better, a little bit of a better neighborhood. It was like one block over. It was a nice little neighborhood. And it was a nice little house too. I moved in with some people, so I got to talk to people. And it was just a, mostly just a bunch of guys. And it was almost like, like the Big Bang Theory kind of, you know, like we had a really, really nice house there. Everybody was close and tight and joking around. And, and most of the time the house was quiet though. And I really enjoyed that. And I was thinking, you know, like what well, life, life is getting a little bit better here, you know? And sometimes when you give up everything, whether by choice or not, and in my situation, some of it was by choice and some of it was not. Like the, the marriage failed because, you know, she wanted to leave and go find herself. But I mean, you know, the giving up the business part, which was a few years before, you know, that was my my decision, you know. And I knew that I had to, like, kind of figure things out fast. And I, I, I knew I'd have, like, something to go off of. So I started doing like a check off sheet. I had a bulletin board. We've talked about this before about my bulletin board. And I, I did a check off up there of all the things I need to do to be retired at 55 and to, to, to move somewhere, you know, warm or whatever. And, you know, I, I chose the Philippines and it took me a long time, you know, to get there, to build back up to where I wanted to be and to start being, feeling happy again. And when I left, I was like, it was like a breath of fresh air getting on the plane and being able to leave that behind. But when I got over here, it was like, I, I felt like, like I had gained so much by coming to the Philippines. Now some people come here and they're miserable because they hate things and they, they're impatient and they have mental illnesses or they're drunks or alcoholics or womanizers or whoremongers or, or whatever. You know, and that's, if you're a normal guy and you come over here, and you, you, you're planning on making a good life and, and starting a family here, the Philippines is the place to be, you know? But I mean, the lesson that I learned from that saying, and I've heard that saying before, you know, was that life goes on, you know? And <clears throat> sometimes like, I'll have like some money in my pocket and like I'll walk by somebody and it'll be like most of my money in my pocket. And all I do is I'll, I'll put a, bit of money aside for the ride and I'll just hand, hand it off to somebody that needs it more than me. And I get more out of that and more joy out of that by losing, you know, that, but I gain something else. And, and, you know, we always forget about when you lose something, sometimes you gain something, you know, and, and, and I think as people today, we, we forget that lesson and it's a huge lesson. It's, it's, you know, like you look at monks who have nothing, you know, and, and they, they gain everything, you know, or, or, or priests or pastors who, you know, give up a certain lifestyle and they, they gain everything or, you know, or like sometimes you could even use that with, 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 a, with Christianity. I mean, you, 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 you know, you give up your past to take on something else. You, you give up all that, you know, and you, you gain something else, you know? You, you gain eternal life if you you know that I'm not trying to weave religion in here but I'm just saying in in general these are things that that happen when you know if you believe that you know but I mean also like you know like I've seen wealthy people give up all their wealth before there's there's been several people that have done stuff like that <clears throat> and they've said that they're happier after giving everything away and watching the other people live happy I mean some older people do do that they give away everything and they, and they 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 feel happy knowing that they made somebody hap, you know, happier, in their life, you know. And you know, we all work to save our money and stuff like that, and and we gain something that way. But you know, when we give out to a family member, we gain. But I mean, to a lot of us, 
I see a lot of people here in the Philippines and they hit rock bottom over him. And, and, and I'm not going to say it's easy, easy to, to, to gain back everything when you lose everything over here. Okay. I, and I'm talking in general throughout the world, but I mean, like in the Philippines, if you lose everything, can you gain it back? If you have a pension or something, you can. If you're if you if you're careful, you can. But in life in general, I mean, we always tend to recuperate from from our losses, whether it be a, a person that we lose, maybe we gain a new friend, or maybe another relative will take that spot. You know, you know, when we have losses of, of death, or, or you know, it's not just a, life is not just about money. You know, I mean, when I when I left the, the United States to come here, did I have a loss? Mm, you know, you can, some people would say, no, you had a gain because you gained a family over here. You gained a, a, a country, you gained a place to live. You gained your happiness and, and you left a lot of things behind. Not to say I didn't leave things behind that I, I loved, I did. You know, some things I had to just kind of set aside and say, you know, I have to give up on this because it's not just not happening. You know, and, and that's the, you know, that's sometimes with dreams, that's the way it is, you know. You know, throughout life, we have these dreams when we reach these pinnacles and stuff like that. And then when you reach that spot, you've reached that, that the pinnacle of happiness and you kind of move on to another dream. So you give up on that and you lose it only to gain another dream, you know. And I just want to do that just like a short discussion on that because I thought it'd be kind of a cool discussion. You know, it's just a kind of a cool thought, you know. Sometimes you have to lose everything to gain everything. And, and, and it's true. I mean... You know, we go through life and sometimes we stick in a, a, a spot way too long. You know, like, let's say you're in a bad marriage and it's awful. And you know, it's not going to get any better. Why would you want to stay in that marriage if you if it's not working? You've tried everything. You've tried to do everything that you can. You know, you've been in this relationship and you see it's not working. You know, that sounds like something that you'd want to get rid of so you can gain everything, you know, on the other side. Now, I'm not telling you to cheat on your wife or anything like that. I'm just talking about a really bad marriage. It's not going to work. It's not. It's going nowhere. You know, I'm just using that as, as, a, as an example, okay? And the same, same way with relationships with people or businesses. If you see a business isn't working, maybe you're in the wrong business and maybe you need to give up on that business and go into another business. If you've tried making that thing work and it's not working and you're just kind of hopping along and you see that it's not really getting you where you want to go in life maybe it's time to take a shot at another business you know um just a thought guys you know it's just a thought i just wanted to bring that up because i thought that'd be an interesting subject for today um i am going to be doing some other subjects but i mean this is just one like off topic off off the expat you know road i want to go off a little bit off of that and just talk about something different today Okay, guys, um, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe and like. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.